According to Punk, he would confront Adam Page backstage where Adam admitted that this was all about the alleged firing of Coca Cabana. It's unclear whether or not Adam would go on to apologize to Punk, but it led to Punk going to the owner of the company, Tony Khan, and his legal team and telling him to handle that. Like, handle that. He basically said, I don't know if I got the snap off. Did I get the snap off? I got the snap off. I used to not be able to snap. As far as we know, there was no consequences for Adam's actions, which only frustrated Punk more. Get used to hearing that. <laughs> the rivals will go on to have their match at the pay-per-view the following weekend, a match that Punk feels was garbage due to him having his guard up. And as somebody who stepped in the ring and has a lot of experience, I, I can't blame him. If I can't trust you to protect me on the microphone, how can I trust you can protect me coming off the top rope or slamming me on the mat this would unfortunately be the case in a match where adam somehow he, he chipped his tooth on a chop to the chest like you know them chops you know what i'm saying if i do that and if the, this is your chest i'm aiming for your chest your teeth is up here dog like I don't know. Punk would go on to win the match famously in tears and ready to put the feud behind him unfortunately though he may have been too excited. As on his first appearance as champion, during his entrance, he would jump into the crowd as he would on multiple occasions, but this time, breaking his goddamn foot against the guardrail. <laughs> like, I, I'll, what was this, three years ago now? Two, two years ago? Yeah, I don't think a 44-year-old should be crowd surfing, so. Yeah, he broke his foot. It's unclear how bad the damage was at this time, but he definitely didn't help it by going to complete his scheduled tag team match where he did moves such as a springboard clothesline, which I can only imagine made things much, much worse. I remember vividly seeing a backstage photo of Punk and his teammates in that tag match, FTR. In the photo, Punk had one boot on and the other boot off with no sock. I remember thinking that Punk is hurt. Then came some off-the-air footage where Punk would chase his former rival MJF out of the ring after MJF just cut his own version of the pipe bomb. In that video, Punk still had one boot off and one sock and was visibly limping. I'm not sure if this was due to me not being in the dirt sheets and the wrestling sites, but as far as I remember, the injury was, was a well-kept secret. The only news we got on it was Punk's last tweet to this day where he says he will address his future in the next episode of Dynamite. Punk would famously come out on that show with a plain white t-shirt, tears in his eyes, and a very bad limp. He announced that he broke his foot and would have to relinquish the world championship. This was a huge blow not only for CM Punk fans, but Tony Khan as well. Like I said punk was supposed to be the john cena of this company the plans revolved around him as AEW wanted to recreate the summer of punk that was so successful nearly two decades ago in ring of honor punk would go off to rehabilitate his injury and even though the plans in AEW came to a sudden stop the attack on his character and reputation was just getting started popular wrestling media personality and alleged punk water carrier ebu of wrestling purists believes this was the worst case scenario for punk all he could do was sit around at home and see fans on social media turn on him and his doubters relish in his downfall not to mention this Cabana story was still a major topic amongst wrestling journalists namely the man whose tweet basically set up AEW in the first place old Dave Meltzer Uncle Dave as some people will call him if you're unaware of who Dave Meltzer is let me just say I'm jealous of you. <laughs> Dave Meltzer is the founder and editor of the Wrestling Observer. If you've ever heard of the star ratings in a wrestling match, they most likely came from Meltzer. It's no secret Meltzer has a close relationship with AEW's EVPs and owner Tony Khan. I used to always hear about these star ratings as a teenager and wonder why none of my favorite wrestlers achieved a five-star rating. Meltzer obviously had a bias towards the style of wrestling that AEW produced as WWE only received a single five-star match between between 1997 in 2018. Ironically, that one five-star match being John Cena versus CM Punk at the 2011 Money in the Bank pay-per-view. To put this in perspective though, AEW in its five-year existence has 32 five-star matches to this day. And, and let me tell you who was wrestling between 1997 and 2018. That means The Rock has no five-star matches. Kurt Angle has no five-star matches in WWE. That means I, I don't think AJ Styles. I think up until recently, AJ Styles didn't have any. Randy Orton didn't have any. I think to this day, he doesn't have any five-star matches. And this was like the Bible to wrestling fans. And I'm 
going totally off script here but i will never forgive the internet wrestling for community for giving this dude a platform not even a platform just platforming is so much like you got to understand the wrestling observer was like the grammys for wrestling i, I guess it's i i, I guess y'all know how ridiculous the grammys is i mean macklemore won over drake and kendrick lamar so no offense to macklemore but you know we even macklemore admitted he shouldn't i'm getting way off <laughs> Anyway, at the time, Meltzer's close relationship with the higher-ups in AEW was only a harmless relationship or friendship between media personality and athlete. At that point, that would only really bother you if you really cared that much about what some random out-of-touch-ass man had to say about wrestling. But when it comes to the point where he's spreading backstage information and lies according to Punk, and if you're Punk, how could you not believe the higher-ups in AEW are against you? Two of the EVPs, the Young Bucks, have a move literally called the Meltzer Driver. Given the fact that Meltzer was leading the charge and pushing the narrative that Punk was causing trouble backstage, and Adam Page, another one of the Bucks' close friends, literally said it on live television, how could you not put two and two together if you're Punk and get four. The injury was so bad that Punk admitted he felt like he let everyone down. Not only could he not fulfill the plan of the summer of Punk for Tony and the fans, but he felt as if he let his own family down as he couldn't even give his little Larry. He couldn't give little Larry a, a walk, man. He couldn't even take little Larry for a walk. And then we showing we showing him a picture now. But like, come on, man. You couldn't give this little adorable dude a walk. That would break my heart. All of this put together meant that Punk's back was against the wall. And if you know Punk and you've been paying attention to Punk like I've been paying attention to Punk, you know this Punk is a very dangerous dude. For everyone, if you're unfamiliar with Punk, he's been known as someone who will fire back when his back is against the wall. His WWE run, for example, in 2014, CM Punk in hindsight was a shell of himself. He looked sick, he looked tired, and that's because he was. I truly believe whether Punk will admit it or not, AEW broke his heart and whether he will admit it or not wwe did in 2014 as well i think he just gave wwe more time than he gave AEW because he gave wwe nine eight years of his life so he went through it with wwe then he's seen it in AEW, and he's like damn it's the same shit it's the same backstage politics it's the same unprofessionalism it's the same people not communicate it's it's the same thing in brighter news <laughs> punk would return from his injury a few months later but unfortunately this would not be the happy-go-lucky punk we saw in his debut at AEW. this was the sick and tired punk that we saw in 2014 just eight years older cm punk would enter a few with the interim world champion john moxley and this right here is one of if not the best example of booking malpractice as at the time not only was john moxley a baby face and one of the AEW originals so punk is returning a few with another good guy who the AEW diehards love more but John Moxley wasn't even under contract to AEW. John literally had this company by the throat. He had all the power. As he even said, he could have went back to WWE with the world championship. Okay. The entire summer, I was not under contract. Right. No contract. Free agent. I was at SummerSlam weekend wrestling fucking Desperado and shit. The day of SummerSlam. Fucking suplexed him on a bunch of aluminum cans and shit, cut in half. It was fucking dope. I could have walked in a SummerSlam that night with the AEW fucking belt if I had been so inclined. Nobody knew that because I don't put my shit out there in the world and let everybody know every fucking thing about my business, you know? So I was not on a contract. Uh, the night in uh, Cleveland? fucking what's his dicks talking about it was in Indianapolis not Indianapolis Minneapolis it was the night he came back and uh, was hopping around on one foot and all that and taking bumping around inner circle or whatever after me and Jericho wrestled in a badass match by the way uh, so we're we're talking later about stuff now keep in mind at this time this is my whole point I basically don't work there for all intents and purposes, I don't even work here. Tony is not my boss. I can I don't even have to be in this room. I don't have to do shit. So even me being in this room uh and offering 
and agreeing to a storyline that puts you over at the pay-per-view, if anything, I'm bending over backwards for Tony and for this dude and for the company and everybody. Because I didn't have to. I didn't have to do shit. Right. If anything, I was being, I was bending over backwards. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Okay. So with this leverage that Moxley possessed, he weighs that to control the story he had in this feud with Punk. Moxley wanted to do a wrestling version of Rocky Three. Now I've never seen any of the Rocky movies, and if it was as bad as this feud was, I have no plans of watching it anytime soon. And Funny enough, Punk would admit that he didn't watch any Rocky films before this feud either. And he thought it was stupid. So I've seen it. Like, I'm like, what is this feud? This feud was bad. Like, it was bad. It, it, a lot of it's on YouTube, but it, it didn't make any sense. According to Punk, Moxley refused to do anything else. He would not lose the Punk without getting a win first. Punk asked Tony if that's what he wanted to do. And Tony said, yeah. Punk says he thought the idea was garbage, but listen to the boss. To put into perspective every everything going on with punk he has john moxley holding his spot hostage adam page being a prick we don't even know if he apologized for it tony khan not holding himself accountable or anyone accountable fans turning on him and the media tarnishing his name I i've lost track of how much bullshit he's putting up with at this time punk would retaliate and if y'all ever heard of the term don't pull superman's cape or tug superman's cape whichever one it is Let's just say that's what AEW in the environment was doing to Punk. And it was about to get ugly for everyone involved. Me, you, fans, wrestlers, everyone. Because not even two weeks into his return, Punk went off script. After dealing with the foot injury for the entire summer, Punk will return in August to do the plan feud with John Moxley, looking a little more in shape, but just as, if not more, tired. He was silent for about three months, and the first time they gave him a microphone, he got some things off his chest. But not for his current on-screen rival, but his previous in-real-life rival and the man he beat for the world championship, Hangman Adam Page. CM Punk will go into business for himself, much like Page did months earlier, and called Paige to the ring, much to the confusion of the commentators who asked if Paige was even in the building at the time. So of course Paige would not come to the ring and Punk would have a brilliant line where he says, that's, that's not cowboy shit, that's coward shit, flipping Paige's catchphrase on his head. Punk will go on to say the apology should be as loud as the disrespect, which adds to my confusion if Adam Page had ever even apologized ever because that could be meaning two things. Doesn't mean that Adam Page never apologized and when you do in the future, the apology needs to be as loud as the disrespect like you better apologize to me publicly or is it saying that yo you apologized privately but you embarrassed me publicly so when you do apologize it better be public i don't know and to this day it I still don't know. <laughs> Punk would turn his attention to his on-screen rival, John Moxley, with some equally harsh words in the context of wrestling. At the time, I thought it was a bit weird in the context of wrestling. Again, I didn't know about the backstage rumors. I didn't know who Sean Ross Sapp was at the time. I didn't know who Ibu of Wrestling Purist was, and I wasn't exactly sure who Dave Meltzer was, and no offense to any of those guys, but I would really genuinely kill to go back to those days i thought calling out adam was weird as punk wasn't even in wrestling gear but i didn't think too much of it i thought everything they were doing was a little weird so you know it's just a different company i guess i don't know but it turns out like i stated previously punk went into business for himself and people were pissed this was the first time he gave people a valid reason to be upset with him as this was a very immature thing to do i understand that this may have been built up for about three months coupled with all the other problems he had on top of people antagonizing him hangman did apologize which again i'm not sure if he did or not you really have to let it go or at least handle it in a better way again he is the leader at this point, and we would later learn down the line, spoiler alert, he was hired as a consultant to Tony Khan. Punk always wanted to be the locker room leader, much given, much is expected. You have to take a lot of bullshit as a leader and handle it the right way. You're not expected to react as a sensitive person, although you have every right to react to us as a sensitive person. As a leader, you're not expected to react, if that makes sense. But again, who am I to say, though? I do believe there's no rule to reaction. So anyways, little did we know, though, this was just the tip of the iceberg. 
in terms of CM Punk firing back as Punk will go on to prove that he's the wrong person to antagonize and expect no consequences. Punk will go on to win his world championship back from John Moxley in his hometown at All Out 2022. Punk seemed to be in good spirits this night as before the show you can see a video of his dog Larry running around the arena while Punk laughs and even post show. He stayed over time taking pictures and videos post match, post show, and post injury. Yes, unfortunately, at some point during his match, most likely during the suicide dive, as you can see, he tries to test his arm by doing some push-ups similar how he would a year and a half later when he suffered the same exact injury on a different arm. Somewhere in between the arena and the post-show media scrum, some someone would piss Punk off, just to put it frankly, as we would proceed to see one of, if not the greatest crash out in wrestling history. Okay. There was a media scrum and before anyone could even ask a question, Punk decided now was the time to explode. Immediately, Punk would cut off the first person to ask a question while open up a pack of sparkling water and muffins. I told y'all this would make sense later. I, I told y'all this was, it's actually cold. Let's, let's, let's give it another try. It's, it's been about a week. Maybe my taste buds are a little bit better and it's a little bit colder. You know what? It's a little bit better cold. I think Punk had it when it was cold. I'm not sure. It's a little bit better. It still tastes like burp, but... Nah, that's awful. I'm, I'm sorry. Nah, that's not it, Chief. That's not it whatsoever. Ugh. What, what, what was I at? Sorry, that shit just literally genuinely gave me a headache. The person to ask him the question was Nick Hausman, which may very be the reason he got pissed off in the first place. We didn't have a lot of clarity on what was going on backstage, but we knew the main problem stemmed from wrestlers in the AEW believing that Punk got Cole Cabana fired. It just so happens the first person to ask a question was a friend of Cole Cabana, as they used to do improv together. Punk knowing this, assumed that Hausman was spreading a rumor, but Hausman would actually <laughs> tell Punk that he was no longer friends with Cabana as well. Much to Punk's surprise, who would go on to apologize to Nick, Punk would then proceed to, for the first time, explain exactly what happened between him and Coca Ben. A lot of, a lot of Just say your name and your. Hey. Hi, uh, Nick Hausman with Wrestling Inc. I'll uh, start, Nick. Um, show of hands. Who here fancies themselves as a journalist? You're a journalist, Nick? All right. I try my best. Okay. Um, um, no, real, real quick. Go ahead. Um, you still do improv? <laughs> no, not a little bit. No? When you did improv, who'd you do improv with? Uh, I did it with uh, uh, Scott Colton. Mm. Okay, so you fancy yourself a journalist. Would you say you're friends with Scott Colton? Uh, no, I haven't talked to Scott in some time. So you're not friends with him? Uh, no, no, Scott and I do not see eye to eye. Oh, wow. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> My point is, if you fancy yourself a journalist, even if it's for the silly world of professional wrestling, and you have journalistic integrity, people who report things mostly that are bullshit and slanderous lies against myself. If you are friends with somebody, you blew my spot. If you're not friends with them, I apologize. It's okay. But you should probably disclose who you're friends with. I'm not friends um, with you. I haven't had Scott. anything to do with Scott Colton in almost a decade. Probably wanted nothing to do with him even longer than that. It's fucking unfortunate that I have to come up here and speak on this when I'm on my time and this is a fucking business. Uh, why I'm a grown ass adult man and I decide not to be friends with somebody is nobody else's fucking business. But my friends, if I fall backwards, will catch me. Scott Colton, I felt, never would have. My problem was I wanted to bring a guy with me to the top that did not want to see me at the top, okay? You call it jealousy, you call it envy, whatever the fuck it is. My relationship with Scott Colton ended long before I paid all of his bills. I have every receipt, I have every invoice, I have every email. I have the email where he says, and I quote, I agree to go our separate ways. I will get my own lawyer and you do not have to pay anymore. That's an email that I have. The only reason the public did not see is because when I finally had to counter sue him through discovery, we discovered he shared a bank account with his mother. That's a fact. And as soon as we discovered that fact and we subpoenaed old Marsha, 
he sent the email, oh, can we please drop all this? To summarize, though, Punk and Cabana was being sued by WWE and their former doctor after Punk exposed why he left the company and the medical staff being the main reason why, in particular, the doctor who was suing. Punk and Cabana would win the case, but somehow this would end their friendship. At some time at the end of the case, the two former friends would agree to go their separate legal ways and have their own defensive teams. As according to Punk, he was paying both their fees. Colt would go on to sue Punk for this, though, and in return, Punk would countersue. And through this, Punk discovered that Colt shared a bank account with his mother. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Colt would request that they stop all of this after Punk had to subpoena Colt's mother. In the media scrum, Punk would express how disappointed he was that he had to explain his private falling out with a former best friend to protect his name. He would, for the first time, express his beef with the EVPs of AEW and best friends of Adam Page, that Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, saying they should have known better than to spread false stories and reprimanded them for be smirching his name to satisfy a niche audience. Then would we'll say the EVPs couldn't run a fucking target, which is hilarious. <laughs> now, it's 2022. I haven't been friends with this guy since at least 2014, late 2013. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't fucking manage a target, and they spread lies and bullshit and, and put into a media that I got somebody fired when I have Fuck all to do with him. Want nothing to do with him. Do not care where he works, where he doesn't work, where he eats, where he sleeps. And the fact that I have to get up here and do this in 2022 is fucking embarrassing. And if y'all are at fault, fuck you. If you're not, I apologize. Punk with ex Dave Meltzer, who is friends of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and those guys, what he did to deserve an empty-headed, dumb fucking fuck like Hangman on a page to go on live television and to go into business for himself. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he said that word for word, bar for bar. I am not adding anything. I couldn't add that. I couldn't come up with that myself. That's funny. But what did I ever do in this world to, go, to deserve an empty-headed fucking dumb fuck like Hangman Adam Page to go out on national television and fucking go into business for himself. For what? What did I do? Dave, what did I ever do? You tell me. Didn't do a goddamn thing. What's your name, sir? Dominic D'Angelo. Fuck the Pittsburgh Packers. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you I'm doing? Pittsburgh. <laughs> I made it really clear in Forbes and I just want to make it clear again. Nick, it's when... not his position to make it very fucking clear. There's people who call themselves EVPs that should have fucking known better. This shit was none of their business. I understand sticking up for your fucking friends. I fucking get it. I stuck up for that guy more than anybody, okay? I paid his bills until I didn't, and it was my decision not to. Yeah, but I shouldn't have no commented when Nick first said it. It's my I, fault, and I if I hadn't, it's my that. fault. Punk would admit to regretting giving Adam Page a receipt, going into business for himself, and calling him out on live television. I appreciate that. I should have just I'm, taken a head on because you never but said But I'm trying anything. to run a fucking business, and when somebody who hasn't done a damn thing in this business jeopardizes the first million dollar house that this company has ever drawn off of my back and goes on national television and does that, it's a disgrace to this industry, it's a disgrace to this company. Now, we're far beyond apologies. Right? I gave him a fucking chance. It did not get handled, and you saw what I had to do, which is very regrettable, lowering myself to his fucking level. But that's where we're at right now. And I will still walk up and down this hallway and say, if you have a fucking problem with me, take it up with me. Let's fucking go. What's your question, Nick? Uh, first of all, you're always very nice to me, and thank you. Uh I can't really do this entire thing justice, as every time I watch the debacle, I notice something new that you may not catch in the midst of watching it for the first time, such as Punk looking at both arms, realizing he's definitely hurt, or Punk using one of his drinks to ice his hip. Man, that's the best use for him, I'm gonna be honest, because they fucking are disgusting. Punk's constant interruptions, and most importantly, Tony Khan's reactions, ranging from uncomfortable and even sometimes not 
nodding along as Punk would confirm in the future nothing Punk said in the media scrum was new to Tony. He's expressed these frustrations before to Tony, but they never got handled, so Punk had to handle them himself. I think the best way to sum up this now infamous quote from Punker that I think we all can relate to, honestly, I'm hurt, I'm old, I'm fucking tired, and I work with children. I highly suggest everyone go back and watch this entire speech because not only is it entertaining, I think it's a valuable lesson for all sides. On one hand, don't keep pushing someone, especially someone who doesn't need to put up with any nonsense or any bullshit. And on the other hand, although I understand why Punk had to defend himself, basically, as the leader of the roster, which he was at the time, you can't be the person to air out everyone like that. Unfortunately, you're held to a different standard and Punk didn't live up to that standard on that night. Tony Khan learned this night that as the owner and as the one with all the power, you can't be too friendly with everyone. He let things get too unprofessional as he, and it's human nature for people to take advantage of stuff like that. And finally, the journalists, who I believe ruined wrestling, but that's a different project, they learned that in a business as unique as wrestling, where trust is everything, spreading information which is very sensitive about a co-workers feel about each other, it's going to nine times out of 10, it's going to have negative impact on the business. And I wish we could have just moved on from here and let things just settle down. But as they say, things can't get any worse until they do. After his media scrum, Punk would head to his locker room, uncertain about his immediate future and his wrestling future in general. The exact details are murky as slight spoiler alert. There are NDAs involved about what's about to happen, but the most common story seems to be that, that when Punk went back to his locker room, he was winding down with his dog Larry and his best friend and trainer's A. Steele's wife. Allegedly, the three remaining members of the Elite and the EVPs, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, along with AEW VP Mega Mar Parka. Park, 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 park angle. They allegedly buzzed down the door to confront Punk. The most common story is that it didn't take long for things to get physical as Punk throws the first punch. This is where things get really scattered, but it seems for sure that Punk got the better end of the altercation as a few highlights of the skirmish is allegedly one of the Bucks being knocked out by a punch from Punk. The other Buck catching a chair with his jaw that was thrown by A. Steel who ran into the locker room after hearing commotion to defend his best friend and his wife who was in a walking boot at the time and Kenny Omega being bit. like bits like bite down like there was a bite mark on his arm like week later <laughs> like it was that bad either by a steel who that's who my vote is because larry is like the cutest dog ever and wouldn't hurt a fly so i highly doubt it was larry and speaking of larry he would allegedly be hit by the door that was bust open losing teeth in the process it should be mentioned though that kenny omega was there to try to keep the peace attempting to break up the fight taking larry and removing him from the locker room fight omega would even go as far as having a conversation with punk sometime after the fight to reconcile one of the bucks was allegedly yelling that it was their company one thing that isn't alleged though is chris jericho after all the aftermath and people winding down and again kenny omega and cm punk having a talk or whatever chris jericho would call cm punk a locker room cancer chris jericho isn't really one to talk about someone who being a locker room cancer in aew but again that's a different AEW project. <laughs> Some look at this as the day AEW died or the day that the revolution died, but I beg to differ. I think this was just the funeral. This was the culmination of a lot of things that were unfortunately going unsettled, like I mentioned before. I personally believe AEW died when Cody Rhodes debuted at WrestleMania 38 five months earlier, or maybe it died when he put out the post that he was leaving AEW in the first place. Or maybe it died when Cody Rhodes in hindsight gave up on AEW and started appearing less and less on on television. Cody Rose was the guy that kept things together. He was the bridge between Punk and the Elite. Cody was the guy trying to establish an identity for AEW so that it could remain sustainable. Again, I don't think it's a coincidence that all of this started after Cody's Mania debut. I, like many other people, didn't see this as a big deal at the time. Backstage fights happen all the time. Hell, even Tony Khan three years ago said backstage fights were no big deal. If you're thinking it's different because the EVPs were involved, I would tell you to look at Vince McMahon. Now, Vince McMahon isn't a 
compass for good leadership whatsoever, but he is a prime example of physical altercations with the higher up being left in the past. I mean, the man literally got knocked out by Bret Hart and took it on a chin like a champ. The reason this was made such a big deal is the same reason Punk was going off in the first place. These guys cannot help themselves but to talk to the dirt sheets. And if you don't know what the dirt sheets is, the dirt sheets is like TMZ for wrestling. Except I think TMZ sort of kind of covers wrestling, but you know what I mean. I remember where I was and what I was doing when I got the news. I was watching a movie on the couch with my then girlfriend and she got upset with me because I kept checking my phone. But literally every couple minutes, there was a new update and a new side of the story. I literally couldn't keep my attention on the movie that it was on. And as we are relishing in all this drama, I know CM Punk is somewhere in Chicago looking at his imaginary reality TV camera like Jim Halpert. The thing that brought Punk to AEW was the perceived locker room camaraderie. A specific example that Punk even brought up was the lack of public knowledge of the condition of the late great John Huber, aka Brody Lee. Some of you may know him as Luke Harper of the Wyatt family. Got a lump in my throat on that one. Jesus Christ. Don't know what happened between then and now, but this was obviously a different company. And whether you believe the revolution died on this night or it was just a funeral, Punk gave the eulogy. And with that, here we are back at square one. Punk's future in wrestling is a big question mark. The revolution is dead and AEW still doesn't have an identity. You would like to believe that the funeral will begin the process of rebuilding, but it was just a gift that just kept on giving, especially the content creators like me because we was far from 